So hi, my name is Manny Nunez, and I'm doing my uh, dig digital citizenship project on cyberbullying. Um, as you know, the issue of cyberbullying is obviously a big deal in high schools today, and even middle schools as well. But with so much technology that has uh, been around throughout the uh, Threat even recently, uh, you look at the broad definition, bullying that takes place using electronic technology, well that's actually extended to even down to mobile devices where any threat that happens through any kind of uh, uh, technology that you can get access um, over the internet, um, obviously if it's direct or indirect, um, it obviously becomes the cyberbullying uh, case. Sometimes the accuser knows what he's doing, sometimes the accuser doesn't know depending on who is performing the cyberbullying. Before then, we had our internet, we had mobile texting, and our MySpace, which actually started the trend of cyberbullying. But now, we've gone from the MySpace um, to where people created pages and actually offended other people, to now the new, 2012 and on, Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, Snapchat, all these, Vimeo even, all these different kind of social media tools that has now been the forefront of really just tormenting people. You see so many people make comments, lewd comments, and... You know, sometimes people even know who they're affecting. And when it comes down to cyberbullying, these cyberbullies have direct access to affecting the accusers. Now, direct cyberbullying um, is usually done through technology, and it's directed towards the person. The person knows who he's directing it towards, such as instant messaging, stealing passwords, and acting as the accuser, online gaming, and even internet polling, which is a rare commodity. Even online gaming, as we mentioned, can be considered cyberbullying. But with the other end, where, where we have cyberbullying by proxy, it's where a cyberbully gets someone else to perform the cyberbullying or when the cyberbully can pose as the victim. And the damage may not be known by the performer if they are asked to perform these actions. Well, even the cyberbully himself may pose as the victim with or without even the accuser knowing. So... There could be something that's indirect, and the, the victim may not even know who is making the accusations, who is performing those accusations. So obviously it becomes a huge deal because any cyberbully can make themselves hidden. Statistics show that Facebook is one of the obvious top um, ways to for for victims to be uh, um, outcomed by cyberbullying. 75% of those who were polled 10,000 survey back in 2014, about over half. Uh, experience some cyberbullying, as you can see, even down to Tumblr, up to 24%, which is becoming more and more obsolete. We look at the now the world of Snapchat, and the idea of Snapchat, and I don't know if you are familiar with uh, the, the app of Snapchat, it's basically an app in which you can take a picture, and it can be on the social media tool for up to 24 hours, sometimes even just as low as 10 seconds, and there could be no trace just because the app actually erases it, so to speak. However, the problem with it, it has now become exponentially... Be a stronger, much stronger cyberbully tool. The evidence can be eliminated, but it's not entirely, depending if it's saved on the phone. And the only viable way to save images is through screenshotting. And the app does let people know, um, let, it lets the people know who saved those screenshots. And because of that, well, Snapchat is now uh, superseded to the use of cyberbullying compared to even Instagram and also Skype. A lot of these images involve hacking, death, and physical assault, and even naked pictures as well. Uh, also on the rise, just because they know that um, uh, it's just seen as harmless fun, but at the same time, that ev evidence is basically rid of. Well, you have other stories in this case. For example, Ryan Halligan, this was before Facebook, um, where instant messaging became a big deal. Um, he... Uh, displayed a very embarrassing story to a, a so-called friend of his. And long story short, well, that friend of his uh, posted his story all over AOL Instant Messenger. And another person who posed as a woman um, forced uh, Ryan actually to tell some more stories, save the conversations, and post it all over MySpace um, and other social media websites uh, when it was all starting. Well, all in all, Ryan was not, you know, he couldn't recover, and long story short, he ended up hanging himself in October of 2003. Uh, there were no, accus no charges were filed, but however, Vermont developed a new bully prevention law about a month after. We also have Amanda Todd, same ordeal, very antisocial, but at the same time, this woman uh, used video chat to communicate with her friends, but one particular friend forced Amanda to show off her breasts. And long story short, well, this image was used to create a Facebook page based on her breasts. A lot of other pages were created uh, against her, and Amanda Todd, well, could not recover. She made a video back in September 2012, a month before she also hung herself 
um, explaining her experience and hardship dealing with cyberbullying. Now, with all these stories and all these apps, you have to really consider what your child is using. You have to verify that you and your child's social media tools are protected. Notice any odd held back behaviors. And if your child is the victim, you want to act thoughtfully, not fast. You want to find out any multiple perspectives, not just your own, to really make sure that your child um, is indeed the victim. And if they are the victim, or if your child is the victim, you definitely need to restore some self-respect so that the uh, the child can recover because it is something that is really hard to discuss, but they are able to recover. And also, here are the resources that I found. Thank you.